If you knew what your true yes was and what your true no was in all areas of your life, would you be able to choose faster and easier? What futures would those choices create? Everyone is capable of connecting to their bodies in a way to have more exuberant and joyful living now and in the future. Now, here is your host of Choosing a Different Future with Ceres. Hi, everyone. I'm Ceres Rivas Verdejo. Thank you so much for being here. This is my first show here on the Inspired Choices Network. Very excited to be here. And so wanted to give a big warm welcome to all the new listeners and for the long-term listeners that have followed us from other platforms. This is going to be a great time. Today's topic today um, is the doors opening. I wonder what you know about that. This is going to be really, really cool. Uh, it's all about knowing what doors to open and which to close. And we can go anywhere we'd like with this. I'm really excited. Check this out. What if you knew what doors to open and which to close in any area of your life? <sighs> Just, yes. <laughs> and what if you could clearly know what to devote your time to, your energy to, your attention to, in order to create more? Many waste time and energy on people, businesses, relationships, and projects that lead them astray. And then they're wondering, how did I get here? <laughs> how did I not see this before? We have all been there, myself included. And instead of judging yourself and your choices, what if you had a way of knowing with certainty what doors to open and how to start talking and taking actions, talking to yourself, taking actions toward having what you truly desire. So if you didn't avoid knowing this information, and some of you out there are, your unique way of knowing this information through partnering with your body, your awareness, and the many energies that are available to you, you could build your confidence, you could expand your world, and contribute to others with more ease. So today, I'm going to talk a little bit about myself, since for some of you, I'm totally new um, to your world and your thing. And you're going to notice in these coming episodes that I may introduce myself a little bit differently every time, because I have a lot of hats. I have a lot of different things that I like to do, all as part of my business, all as the way that I uniquely like to enjoy my life. And with respect to this topic today, this knowing, truly knowing what doors to open and which to close, I want to make sure that you know there's a couple key things about me. So I am a body relationship coach. Has anyone heard of that before? Hmm. A body relationship coach communicates with your body in order for you to feel more empowered and connect and communicate with your body more effectively. And if you'd like, only if you'd like, it also empowers you to connect and communicate with other bodies as well. But it starts with your body. And then I, I am also a family and child coach. And so I empower families to use what they know about each member of the family, their gifts, their strengths, their interests, to bolster, to strengthen, to work on things when it's new, it's different, it's challenging, so that everyone in the family can thrive. Instead of maybe we need to have one person be the priority or focus, and then the other people don't get to be feeling as supported, as heard, as seen. And then the other third thing I'm gonna to mention today, and then we're gonna get into this juicy topic even more, I'm so excited, is I'm the creator of this living and dying body process. And this body process is a body process that uses different energies, awakens them within you. And with simple hand movements, it allows you to be more connected with your body so that you can use your unique gifts and capacities with living to your advantage instead of using it against you, which many of us do, unfortunately. So we're going to get into it today. This is such a cool topic because we're opening a door together today. 
I am stepping through this door as my first as my first episode here on this amazing network, the Inspired Choices Network, and make sure to connect with us on all these different platforms. We're going to be on 250 platforms for podcasts, for TV. You can join us in the live chat in this episode, many of you are, and in future episodes. So mark your calendar. Mark your calendar and make sure that you set these dates aside. We're going to be connecting on Fridays at 10 a.m. Eastern of the United States. And yes, we also have the the Inspired Choices Network or ICN app. So lots of options for you. And these are all, I see every single one of them is doors that are opening. And for some of us, when we have all these doors that are possible for us to walk through, we're like, whoa, too many options. But what if instead of being the whoa and staying in the whoa and then getting paralyzed, we can actually identify, okay, which ones would we truly like to open and connect with and flow energy from and receive from and which ones are just there and they're sitting and they're waiting for when we're ready. Just because everything's an option, excuse me, just because everything's an option and ready for us, does it mean that we actually have to open all those doors at the same time and we don't have to walk through them all at the same time? That's when we sometimes get that sensory overload when we need to be like in a cave and shut down. I've had those moments where I'm like, okay, I just want to reset. I'm going to turn off all the lights. I'm going to maybe put on my weighted blanket grab some tea. I always have some tea. I have tea with me right now. (laughs) I'm a bit of a tea fiend. And go ahead and really sit with, all right, what is this going to create for me to open this door or not? And then we're going to also talk about when to close certain doors. All right. So what if you knew, what if you clearly knew when it was a time for a beginning? And when it was time for an ending and when it was time for a change. And those are three very distinct considerations, okay? So what are the areas of your life? Oh, I'm glad I'm seeing in the chat. This really resonates with me. That's beautiful. I'm so glad to hear that. Um, One of the things that I would love to look at is what for you is the areas of your life where you would like more clarity and ease to know this, to know, okay, is it time to open up a new door? And opening up a new door, and this is really important, I wanna make sure you get this. Opening up a new door doesn't always require closing a previous one. I ha- it makes me think of my relationship coaching. You know, When you're doing body relationship coaching, you're inviting people to connect with their body so that they're ensuring that the relationships that they're creating nurture their bodies actually provides a, a space for them to create a body that it, where they can receive pleasure and enjoyment and have adventure and receive instead of cutting off their receiving. And when I'm, I'm asking you all, well, what would you like with this? And when we're looking at, well, does it always have to be that when you open a door, you have to close one? No, there's no have tos in any area of your life, including with this. And yet there's a lot of lies that we've been told about opening and closing doors, beginnings and endings. And I was recalling right now as we're talking, a client of mine in which they were like, oh, I'm wondering about if I'm gonna stay with my husband or not. A lot of people come to me for relationship coaching when they're debating if they should stay with together or not. And sometimes it's just the individual person and then indirectly their partner is impacted and and gets the benefits of the coaching. And sometimes it's the two together come to me as a couple to work with me. And actually, I've actually worked with thruples. Who knows a thruple that may need some support? Uh, And one of the things that we looked at was if we didn't feel like it had to be an all or nothing, we either break up and it's over or we're staying together and we keep things the way they are, or we're just doing this dance. It's like, wait, it may be that these certain aspects of the relationship dynamic need to have doors closed to them. Like, what if you close the door to the judgment? What if you close the door to every time you keep bringing up the past 
and like flagellating and whipping and punishing your partner with stuff that they did before or things that they said before. And then you kept the fond memories. You kept those trips. You kept the ooh ah moments when things were really fun and easy. And there was a beautiful flow between the two of you, a lovely intimacy. I wonder if we didn't feel like it was all or nothing, what clarity we would be aware of. What would we choose? Okay. Um, I'm looking at the chat here. Yes. Yes, thank you. And so the other thing as well is with, let's say, look at this for business. And this is just so you can start getting a sense of what areas of your life and what aspect of those areas are you already having this, mm, this perception that maybe something else is required here. And then I'm, we're going to talk about how you know when there's these things that are required, opening, closing, changes, tweaks. And also, when have you ever had it before? When have you already walked through these doors, opened these doors, closed these doors that maybe you haven't recognized that then you can use to your advantage now? And you won't be like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. I'm pretty sure you've done it at least once before, if not many, many times but have blocked your awareness to it. And so then you can't use that information, that awareness of, I've done this. And if I could do it before, I could do it again to your advantage now, to have you have more ease with this new situation, these new things. So yes, I love this question in the chat. Yes, curious how we can tell, how we can learn to recognize and trust our awareness. We're totally gonna get into that, thank you. So first it starts off with, when I asked that original question, what are these areas of your life that you would like more clarity and ease with? A lot of people don't even consider, wait, I can have more clarity and ease? That's allowed? I don't have to go and analyze everything. I don't have to go and spin my wheels and, and just keep repeating the same patterns over and over again of lying to myself, of sabotaging what I'd like, of going against my awareness, of judging myself over and over again and saying that I'm not capable, that I suck at this. Whatever you're telling yourself, it, it's really not working. That, that's the first step is looking at this and whatever that area of your life that popped into your mind when I asked that question that's where you look in and you lean into that instead of avoiding it and going in the opposite direction like so many of us have done, including myself in the past. But that's okay if we've done it before. That's the past over and done with. And now what would we like to choose? There are so much more available to us. There's so much more available to us about this. And so if you haven't Let's see here. Yes, let's go there. And then we're going to go into a break in a little bit. If you haven't felt a sense of relief, <sighs> some breathing room, if you haven't felt this like nervous kind of giddiness, this excitement, because this thing, this something new is starting, then it's about you really recognizing, wow, I don't think I've opened a door or and certainly not walked through a door in a while, because that's what it feels like when you're opening a door, there's a giddiness, there's, an, there's a relief, there's a spaciousness and lightness to that, that is provided and that is possible when we are willing to acknowledge it and ask for it, okay? Now, here's the thing. Are you willing? Are you willing to have those sensations of giddiness, of nervousness? And it's okay if you're not willing to, but that's one of the things that are required so that you can know how you uniquely open doors, close them, and have this awareness. And then when choosing this, you'll build your confidence, okay? You're going to build your confidence. So you are listening to Choosing a Different Future with myself, Cedis, on the Inspired Choices Network. And when we return, we're going to continue to discuss knowing how to open and close doors, knowing when to open and close doors. And we'll continue this topic when we come back on how you can build your trust and confidence and your awareness about this. 
most people haven't been taught how to listen and partner with their bodies in order to create lives that include clarity, pleasure, ease, and connection. Tuning in to Choosing a Different Future with Series, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and resources on how to use your awareness of bodies and energy to your advantage. Series is a family and child coach and therapeutic energy worker who will guide you to get clear and acknowledge what's brilliant, magical, and a gift about you. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspire Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspire Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Choosing a Different Future show with series. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. Connect with series through her website, empoweringlightlanguage.com or send an email to empoweringlightlanguage at gmail.com. Now, back to the program. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Cities on Choosing a Different Future. And today our topic is, I have to keep reminding myself, <laughs> knowing what doors to open and which to close. And so when we came back, before we went on break, we were talking about how to start recognizing when we should open a door or close a door, when we can know what that feels like for us. And for each of us, it's a little bit different. Um, if you'd like to know more about this, I definitely recommend getting more information about the living and dying body process, which is where this idea of door openers awakened within me in this particular way, because I've been very fortunate to be playing with different energetic modalities and techniques for many years for my own personal health benefits, mental health, emotional, physical health, and then also all these different programs and techniques and trainings for, as a speech language pathologist, learning behavioral specialist, and feeding therapist, working with families and children. And I can't, it amazes, amazes me, I can't express this enough, how impactful and powerful this is for young children. If I had these tools as a young child, man, I would have been so much happier, having so much more ease so much earlier. And I had a pretty good childhood. Um, Knowing more about the living and dying body process, there's different ways of doing that. We have awakening classes. The next one is July 16th. And then we also have one on September 23rd. Information about that is at empoweringlightlanguage.com slash living and dying. And then there's also these exuberantly you in relationships classes that are coming up. This one is going to be starting August 1st, this next one, where we're doing an eight-part series of calls, about two calls a week, where we dive deep into what does it even look like to, for us to be exuberantly ourselves in relationships? How do we communicate when we're really honoring our voice? How do we actually choose people that listen to us, that make us feel heard and seen? And then how do we recognize them and see them for who they truly are instead of what we maybe are fantasizing for them to be or we would like them to be or hoping and praying that they would be? And then we also have the elements of living and door openers are an elements of living we have the self-paced series of the elements of living that's available at empoweringlightlanguage.com slash elements of living. So now let's get back into this juicy topic of door opening. So we mentioned in the last break, before the last break, that one way for us to know, hey, what's it like for me to know if it's time to open a door? Recalling your body right now, when was the last time you felt excited? 
when was the last time you drew in a deep sigh of <sighs> relief of like, oh my gosh, I feel so much lighter right now. <sighs> Maybe it was entering certain spaces. Like for me, just walking into certain yoga studios, I'm like, yeah, this is where I need to be right now. Or when you're, when you're having a beautiful conversation or a meal with a family member and a friend and just their presence just makes you feel really good. And you're like, yeah, yes, thank you so much for being here. Or when you're about to start up a new adventure, you're going on a trip, maybe a place you've never been to before. And you're like, ah, we're getting on the plane. We're taking off. Oh my goodness. Like when was that last moment when you had any of these feelings come up for you? And if it's been a while, that's okay. That's okay. But if you'd like that, what are these ideas, these possibilities, these things that have maybe been presented to you as an option that when you consider them, most of it, there may be a little bit of some other feelings. We're not going to talk about like the F word and the D word. And we'll talk, eh, we don't have to talk about fear and doubt. Like, ugh, we're not doing that. What if we actually looked at, hmm, this kind of makes me feel a little like, ooh, ah, this is kind of like, makes a little bit of a trembling in my belly. There's a little goosebumps coming up here. These different things, these are signals that our body is giving us. And again, for each of us, it's different. It's going to be different. But these are signals that when you get a sense of this, what if you said, and just for a couple seconds, just play around with it. If I open the door to this, what would it create? If I open the door to this person, what would it create? And if you get more of that lightness, more of that sense of relief and space, more of that smile, giggles, just, just perceive that. If you'd like more of that, choose to walk through the door, choose to lean in, choose to fully embrace it. If you don't want more of that, you don't have to walk through the door. The door is there. It's ready again when you are ready to walk through them. Now, here's the thing. What if you considered this certain option? Oh, I'm going to go on a date with this person. Oh, I'm going to take I'm, this job offer has been given to me. Hmm, what would it be like? What would it be like if I open the door to this person? What would it be like if I open the door to this job? And then instead of those lightness, you get this heaviness, you feel contracted, it feels like a punch in the gut, or like your body's like, whoa, and you lean back, like almost repulsed or repelled from that option. I wonder if you're willing to receive those, that information, and this takes practice. Give yourself some space with this, give yourself some time to play around with this. When you ask these questions more and more and you're willing to receive this information and you acknowledge the information you're giving, that's a big thing. Acknowledgement is huge. You're like, oh, that just showed up and that just showed up. Well, if you have this information of, oh, no, or repel or heaviness, if you want more of that heaviness and repulsion and disgust and nausea and all of that, go ahead and, and keep leaning into that. It's a choice. <laughs> Or you can be like, mm, don't want that. That's not for me. That's not what I'd like as a part of my life. And go in the other direction and close the door to that. And closing a door doesn't have to be a slam. It doesn't have to be conflict. It doesn't have to be confrontation. It doesn't have to be aggressive. These are all these things that we've been told or that we tell ourselves that closing a door has to be. It doesn't have to be traumatic right? These are these lies that we've told ourselves or that we've been told and bought that then stop us from closing the door to things that are not for our greatest good, that are not kind to our bodies, that are not actually going to create more and lead us to expanding our world and lead us to these beautiful, exuberant, lit up lives that we could have. Okay. These are these different options that are available to us if we're willing to ask these questions. Okay, if I open the door to this, what would it create? And now here's the thing. You could also ask, and maybe for some of you, this would be 
easier or clear? If I close the door to this, what would it create? You see how the closing the door, if some of you might already have gotten this like, oh, heaviness to that. For many people, the first question, what would opening the door to the create? What would opening the door to this create? Because many of us, that's what our default setting is. We're already closing the doors all the time. We're already cutting off our receiving, creating separation, pushing people away, pushing money away, pushing love and caring away. Oh, that compliment, like when your friend was like, oh girl, you look so cute. I love that top. And you're like, oh no, no, this whole thing, that was you closing the door in your beautiful friend's face. Sorry, friend. Sorry. Okay. So for many of us, we are often closing doors all the time. And what we need to develop and what we need to work on is how we open doors. That's the muscle that is a lot weaker. It's like we've been lopsided. Here we are, we have one bicep, er, 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 and it's super flex and it's really big, bum, bum, bum. And then this other one's like a flabby mess. That's the door opener part. We haven't really been working that one and flexing it. We haven't been building up our tone and our power with that one. And what would it create if we did? What would it create if we opened the door to opening doors? <laughs> oh, we have some new people coming in in the chat. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So for you, for these new people too, feel free to post questions in the chat. Feel free to answer and comment in other people's comments and what we're going on. We'll notice some of the different little snippets from previous comments that we've been doing. Um, the thing is too, is this idea of door openers came from the living and dying body process. I mentioned this. And so there are gosh, nine different categories of the elements of living that have come up as I started creating this body process. I created it because I was in lots of trauma. I was in lots of pain. I was working with a lot of people that were dealing with trauma and pain and transitions and not having the ease they knew was possible with that. And so I was giving different private sessions and Remember I said, I've been playing with all these different modalities and techniques for years. It has created a lot of space and ease for me. And yet we're on a, on a journey. There's no cap to how much more ease and clarity that we could have. And so I knew there was more possible for me. And I definitely knew there was more possible for my private clients. And these certain energies were coming up. These certain energies were coming up in these sessions. And I was like, this isn't like access consciousness. This isn't like Tantra. This isn't like shamanism. This isn't theta healing. Huh? This isn't Reiki. Okay. What is this new thing that's showing up? And I started having a conversation with these energies and my body and the earth. And over time, I kept opening the door and opening the door and I was leaning in because it was creating more and it was making me really happy. It was making my clients really happy. They would come and walk away glowing and being like, I thought I was happy. I thought I knew I, I wasn't depressed. And yet, oh, whoa, what's this? You know, I was like, yeah, lean into that. And so door openers is one of these nine categories of the elements of living and after this next break, we're going to talk about these different elements of living, how you can start to play around with them and how they can all inform you on how you uniquely know when to open a door, when to close the door. And maybe we'll get a chance to talk about this other thing about door openers that, let's see, if y'all are willing, if you would like to know about it, let me know. I think this might be helpful as well for you to consider, because for many of us, it's not just about knowing the open, the close, but there's this piece about this when we feel stuck. How many of you feel stuck? And if you do, this is the, this is the segment you're really going to want to listen into. This is going to be really important to you to get unstuck. And for all of us, we've had those moments where we're feeling a little bit unstuck. But what if we didn't have to stay there? What if like, okay, this is where I'm at so far but I am totally capable of changing this. We all are. So um, you are listening to Choosing a Different Future with myself, Siri Sirivas Verdejo on the Inspired Choices Network. When we return, we'll continue to discuss 
knowing when to open doors and when to close them. We've been talking about how to build our confidence with this, how it perceives and feels like for us to know when this shows up in our worlds. And we'll continue this when we'll be back. Back. Bye for now. Most people haven't been taught how to listen and partner with their bodies in order to create lives that include clarity, pleasure, ease, and connection. Tuning in to Choosing a Different Future with Series, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and resources on how to use your awareness of bodies and energy to your advantage. Series is a family and child coach and therapeutic energy worker who will guide you to get clear and acknowledge what's brilliant, magical, and a gift about you. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is the Choosing a Different Future show with series. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Connect with Ceres through her website, EmpoweringLightLanguage.com, or send an email to EmpoweringLightLanguage at gmail.com. Now, back to the program. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I am Ceres Raquel Rivas Verdejo. I'm choosing a different future. And today, our topic is what, knowing when to open and when to close doors. Um, before we went on break, we were discussing how we can uniquely identify within each of us when we might want to open a door, when maybe we haven't allowed ourselves to open doors so far. Now, the idea of door openers came to me as I've been playing with the living and dying body process that I created. It's a body process that allows you to awaken your unique gifts and capacities with living and for you to notice the in the people around you in their bodies what they have been willing to choose so far and what they might be willing to choose moving forward so that you can know when to devote your time energy and attention to someone or not when to devote your time energy and attention to a certain job project space things like that and when it's not the time or they're not willing to receive that. It won't actually create more to do that. And as I was giving sessions of this body process to people, I got this information about door openers, some of which we've discussed, like we've talked about how when you'd like to have more space and ease, when you'd like to oh, have more pleasure with your body, enjoyment, when you'd like to be clear instead of that F word and the D word that we don't talk about, right? the fear and the doubt, when we don't want to have that, like all of these different things, if you'd like that, the door openers are there and waiting for you to acknowledge them. Hi, door openers, and are waiting for you to play with them more so that you can actually have clarity on, okay, is it time for me to have this new beginning with this? And it, it can be in different aspects. We talked about, it's not about all or nothing, okay? And it's also about really looking at where we could open way more doors than we've ever had before for ourselves. Because many of us, we've been busy closing doors, closing doors, closing doors, closing doors, resisting, blocking, shutting people away, creating separation, including separation from ourselves, shutting door to awareness to the earth, shutting the door to the awareness to what's going on. And I get it because it can be a lot of information sometimes, but you can also feel like, okay, how about I, I'm willing to open the door to the inspiration, these ideas, this, this enjoyment of living, and I can close the door to the noise, to the drama, to the upset, to the lies. Do you see that? And yet they're all could be a part of living, but we get to pick and choose from this buffet of beautiful options to create something that will be phenomenal for us. 
So there's different, really quickly, there's different categories of the elements of living. There's, a, there's an ebook you can purchase for just $7 US where it goes into all these different categories in depth. There are the influencers, the distractors, the door openers we've been talking about, we'll talk more about, the discoverers, the outlaws, the powers, Ah, the powers, like, oh, the ability to open doors and close doors anytime we want, the worlds, the celebrants, and the destroyers. And this is really key information to have for you to actually be creating your life based on what's going to work for you instead of what you've been told your life is supposed to be like. Now, before the break, we were talking about how to know when it's time for you to open a door, when it's time for you to do this. And I'm leaning more into this door opening part versus the closing doors. Cause like I said before, that's what most of us are constantly doing. We're closing doors to money. We're closing doors to ease. We're closing doors to having people that are kind and nurturing to us that are fun to be around. Now, when we are looking at, gosh, there's so many places that we can go with this. Okay, yes. When we are looking at opening a door to something, having a new beginning, I am wondering for each of you, for each of you, I'm wondering what is something that you have never considered before that just for a couple seconds you can play around with today? Like, I've never really considered, I don't know, going to. Malawi, that country, Malawi. And it's like, what would, what would it create if I open the door to this? If I open the door to this, what would it create? And get a sense in your body of what that would be like. I guess my body's like, hey, Malawi, what's going on? <laughs> How's it going? All right. Okay. So I might be planning a trip to Malawi. I'm going to look into it. I don't know where Malawi came from. I just popped in my head. So <laughs> Now, okay, now get the sense of, all right, what would I, what would it be like, hmm, if I open the door to, to breaking down this wall of my office here to the right of me, oh, immediately my body's like, don't do it, you're gonna be fined, the people who own this property are not gonna be happy with you, <laughs> It's like, oh, it's, it's, it doesn't stop. It's like, make sure you acknowledge. So I acknowledge, okay, got the information body. I'm not going to choose that. Here's the thing. A lot of us will get the heaviness. We'll get that information of a no. We'll get the information of a don't do that, but we'll stay ruminating and looping on it over and over again. Instead of just being like, okay, got the information done, not choosing it and going on. So instead we'll like be fascinated by the poo. We'll like, oh, this is all slimy and gross and it smells horrible. I'm going to keep looking at it versus like, I got it. Bye. I'm going to toss that over there. Close the door to it. That's the stuff to close the door to. Okay. And then the things that we are like, oh, this is happiness. This might make us feel really good. We're like, we go immediately into thinking about, well, that's going to cost too much money. Or I don't know who I'm going to go with. It's going to be too, it's going to be too much work. It's going to be dangerous for me to go to another country. Like we go into all this conclusion instead. Now a true door opener, when you start developing this and working on this, and again, it takes practice, you will realize that you can open and close doors at any given moment. You have total choice on how to do that, when to do that, with who to do it with, versus like, oh, immediately I have to go into everything that's going to go wrong. Every time you go into everything that's going to go wrong, guess what you're doing? You're closing doors. And that's where we go into that, what I talked about before the break. This door closing muscle Oh, oh, that bicep is super strong, maybe too strong, overworked, give it a break. Instead, uh, uh, start developing this other one where you are actually opening more doors and leaning into the lightness and leaning into this thing that shines bright, that helps you shine brighter in the world, in your life, and includes you, more of you in your life. Because for many people who are givers, healers, the teachers, the ones that are, that are those that are called during a crisis and an emergency, those that are called for comfort, 
you're doing a lot of door closing to you. You're doing a lot of door closing to you having more ease and fun and pleasure and clarity. And I, if I could put it in a little box with a bow for you and hand it to you right now, I would give you the gift of you opening more doors for you and knowing that by you doing that and by you recognizing all those moments you have done it before, but you don't really acknowledge because you've done it before and you're like, oh, that felt too good. Or, oh, because I did that, it was against somebody else. Like, no, you opening a door for you does not mean you're closing a door for someone else. That is another lie that we have been told. Okay. And so if, you, if I were able to give you this lovely gift of here, you're a door opener. A door opener knows that they can open any door at any time and they can close any door at any time. <sighs> Here you go, my friend. You can have that now. Are you, would you be willing to receive that gift or would you like to keep being all lopsided and be more about the door closing where everything has to end, where you have to be miserable, where you have to be in constant pain, and I'm not saying this flippantly. I really am not because I had chronic pain. I used to have chronic anxiety and depression. You wouldn't believe me probably meeting me now, but you wouldn't have recognized me in my teenage years and in my 20s because I was hunched over like the hunchback of Notre Dame, oftentimes with pain in my hands, in my knees, in my back, like electric, you know, that like knife slicing pain. Oh yeah. Oh, I was very familiar with that. Don't wish that on my worst enemy. Nope, nope. And so when I say, hey, please give yourself the gift of opening more doors, opening the doors to those moments of not having pain, of not feeling so unbelievably stressed out that you are buzzing, that you can't sleep. I used to have insomnia where I would only sleep for three or four hours a night, all right? Now, because I've opened the door for me to not have that, for me to be like, okay, Who's the next interventionist I need to work with? Who's the next naturopathic doctor? Who's the next healer that I need to invite into my world so that I can not have this pain? This is part of why I know so many techniques and energetic modalities. I kept going and not giving up and moving and walking through the doors to all of these different things so that I could create more for me. And now I can invite other people to that. But I had to start with me. And for each of you, you have to start with you or how are you going to invite anybody, your kids, your partners, your loved ones, your clients to another possibility if you're not taking care of you? Really embracing and developing yourself as a door opener is one of the greatest gifts that you can give to you. It really is. And it's one of the greatest gifts that you can give to the people that you love and care about. Are you willing to do that or not? And that's okay. It's a choice. It's a choice. Now, we're, I want to make sure you all know about our next, our next talk. This is going to be so great. In our next conversation, we are going to have, this is next Friday. So we're going to be connecting every Friday at 10 o'clock Eastern, which is the time zone for Charlotte, where I live and New York. And in our next conversation, we are going to have a special guest, Clement Go, And the title is Nurturing Empowered Children. How cool is that? We're going to talk about our commonalities with this. And um, I'm going to read a little bit about what we're saying. So what if the way you interacted with your children empowered them? What if you could nurture them differently and more effectively? So Clement Go from Buddy Adventures will be joining me to share our experiences working with children and families, and will provide specific tips on how to rewire children's perspectives through play to empower them and to build confidence. The benefits of rewiring their mindsets, reframing situations, and using cutting edge psychology and language will be discussed so that parents, caregivers, and educators can facilitate an empowered child. And there's a bunch that we're going to be talking about here. I can't wait. Please make sure to connect with me and all these different 250 platforms for the podcast and TV here through the Inspired Choices Network. Um, I really hope that we can continue to connect in future episodes. 
please feel free to give comments and feedback on the episodes after you've watched them. Thank you so much for joining me. I freaking loved it. I hope that you feel more empowered in knowing how you uniquely open and close doors. And I hope you give yourself the gift of being able to do that more effectively now and in the future. Until next time, everyone. Oh, and after the show, please go ahead and connect with us on all of the different platforms as well. Most people haven't been taught how to listen and partner with their bodies in order to create lives that include clarity, pleasure, ease, and connection. Tuning in to Choosing a Different Future with Series, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and resources on how to use your awareness of bodies and energy to your advantage. Series is a family and child coach and therapeutic energy worker who will guide you to get clear and acknowledge what's brilliant, magical, and a gift about you. This is the Choosing a Different Future show with series to participate in the program. Join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. Connect with series through her website, empoweringlightlanguage.com, or send an email to empoweringlightlanguage at gmail.com. Now, back to the program. Okay. Hi. Um, gosh, is this just shows this is all new to me. I actually have a whole much more I can talk about. And <laughs> I, re- I forgot we all have multiple breaks. This is me getting used to a longer format. So thank you for your patience. And you're going to be hearing about the next episode again at the end of this break as well. Um, I'm so amused by myself. I tell you, I was just so excited to let you know about the next one. And so that means that I get to actually give you even more information about this door openers idea. So yes, here's the thing. Welcome back. Welcome back. I am Siris Raquel Rivas Verdejo. I'm choosing a different future. And today we have been talking about um, knowing what doors to open and which to close. So here's the thing. Let's talk a little bit about how we can, I know everyone's laughing with me in the chat. Thank you for laughing with me instead of at me. (laughs) Oh gosh. So what's going on here is that we need to be, it's very important for us to be willing to know and communicate to others effectively about what we would really like. And this is one of the most powerful ways that we can actually not just open a door for us, but invite other people to know, hey, I'm doing this, I'm moving forward. And you can be a leader and an example to other people by you opening doors. This is one of the benefits and one of the reasons why it's really important for all of us to open doors more is we get to actually create a different reality. We get to invite people that are marginalized, that feel shut down, that feel unheard or seen to be seen and heard and acknowledged and like, oh, okay, this is, there's a space for me in this world. You know, a great example of this is I did a call a couple of years ago called, have you been told the world would be a better place without people with special needs? And it came from a special request from some friends in Brazil and in India who were saying that not people, not many people were talking about people with special needs in their countries, and certainly not using their awareness of energy and of bodies like I do. And so I did this call, and it was really amazing. It was really powerful. And maybe we'll revisit this topic in our show here to, um, in a future episode if you'd like. Um, so if you'd like, go ahead and let me know. But one of the things that we looked at with this was by each of them opening this door and asking for, hey, I'd like more support. I'd like to know how I can help these kids and families, how I can make sure that they don't feel like they have to be hidden away in institutions, that, that they don't have the right to live, that they, their very existence 
is taking away from others. These are the messages that people with special abilities and special needs are told. Maybe that's a message that you've been told implicitly or explicitly by people in the past at some moment. And so one of the things that that we that they did by asking for that special call is they were like, I'd like this. They informed me, they told me, they were able to request that, they opened this door. And now there are people that know from that conversation, from the energetics of the rippling out that that conversation created, that there are people that are looking for them and that they appreciate people with special abilities. They appreciate people that are different, that have a, 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 a take and a perspective that is new and that is innovative. And with these different tools and, and gifts and capacity and perspectives, we get to create something different because I think a lot of us could agree that the way that most of the world is functioning is not sustainable and is not honoring of bodies, of the earth, of, of us actually having joy and a connection with our bodies and with each other's bodies. And so this is so one of those things that I invite each of you to do is to actually ask, ask me, ask the people that are around you for the things that you would really like to have so that you can start opening the door for yourself to have this additional tools, information, clarity, guidance, inspiration, and hope. I think we could all benefit from way more hope. And for each of us, it may be one area of our life or it may be multiple, but I would love some more hope in the world. I would love for people to know that life is worth living and that them being here on the planet actually makes the planet a greater place. And so all of us together right now, before we part ways, I would love for all of us to acknowledge ourselves as door openers and make a gentle ask, a gentle request that will open a door it could be something personal. It could be something for the world. It's not better or greater if it's for someone else or for you or for the world. Just whatever pops into your head first, ask for that. Acknowledge the door opening. Yes. Acknowledge that door opening. And then go ahead and walk through that door. Let's walk through that door together and create something different and more powerful together. I hope you join me next week. I'll get this rhythm down of all these different breaks, I'm sure by then. It's gonna be a great discussion with Clement Go from Buddy Adventures. And we'll be talking about our shared experiences, our individual and, and shared experiences working with children and families on how we empower families and build confidence so that we can rewire mindsets, reframe situations. And we use cutting edge psychology and language. I love the language. And we're going to give this information to you so that parents, caregivers, and educators can facilitate an empowered child. And an empowered child is more likely to create strong bonds with family and friends, think outside of the box to problem solve better, be more successful in school and in life, calm and regulate themselves and their emotions, feel and be more of themselves, and even more is possible and will be discussed on this call. And so just in case you're wondering, just because most of the families I work with have kids with special needs in them, not all of them do. It's really about families that would like to know that they know, know that they are the experts of these kids, but that they know that there's a faster and easier way possible. And they'd like that yesterday. I don't know about y'all, but I always like everything to show up yesterday. I'm like, it's too late. Let's go. And so for those families and for those kiddos, I like calling them kiddos, that are fast and that are like impatient and are waiting for this possibility that they know is there waiting for them to show up faster and easier, this is going to be a conversation you're not going to want to miss. And Clement Go is amazing. He's a lovely human being that I was able to meet um, doing some trainings with Michael Burnoff in uh, Arizona, in Scottsdale, Arizona, beautiful place. 
And so you're going to love hearing about him. You're going to have a great time. And I know that you'll join us. Thank you for listening to the Choosing a Different Future show. Series returns Fridays at 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Mountain, and 7 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until then, keep choosing what will work for you and your body, your own unique way honoring what will work for you. 